Hey, it's Jen, and the recording's a little slow because it's not telling me when it's recording because my earphones don't work, and I thought my entire podcast before the sound didn't work, so that's how my life is going right now. I'm here to talk about a book that I did not create, and it's called Money, Wealth, Life Insurance, How the Wealthy Use Life Insurance as a Tax-Free Personal Bank to Supercharge Their Savings. I didn't write this book. Jeff Thompson wrote this book. It's a number one bestseller. It was under $10. I bought this book because I am getting my life insurance license. And I went to one meeting. I was like, I'm going to go to all the meetings. I went to one meeting and they said to buy this book. And so I said, okay, so I just want to share with you. It's really a short book, but something I didn't know about Leland Stanford, who is my favorite tycoon here in Sacramento that use life insurance. Can I tell you about this? Because I am your number one docent here at the Stanford mansion. Stanford University, which is right by my dream home, 303 Atherton Ave in Atherton, California, that I will be purchasing in 2024. Use life insurance. Let me tell you how Stanford University did it. After Leland and Jane Stanford lost their son to typhoid fever, they focused their efforts and their wealth on helping other people's children. In 1981, the first 555 students enrolled at Stanford University, that's just a sentence, but after Leland died in 1893, it became a financial struggle. Not wanting to give up what she so deeply believed in, Jane used her husband's life insurance policy proceeds to help fund the operations and pay faculty, allowing Stanford University to weather a dangerous six-year period of financial distress. That was already worth my $10 right there because rich people have life insurance and they use it when someone dies. They're not doing a GoFundMe. They have the money. They set themselves up. And you should too. As a tycoon or a professional business person or a family member, you don't have to be Leland Stanford. He, he uh, got a gold mine. And there's a bunch of gold out here in Placer that I would love. I would love to sell gold mines. I would love to buy all the gold mines too because I am the number one 49er fan. And we lost the Super Bowl to Los Angeles. I don't live in Los Angeles. I live in Sacramento. I grew up in the Bay Area. I'm not upset that we lost the Super Bowl, but my friend's boyfriend and my other friend that's a male was upset. And I don't like it when men are upset. I don't like it. And I said, no, I take full responsibility for the 49ers not winning the Super Bowl because I wasn't their cheerleader. And most people don't even know the 49er mascot. It's a gold miner. We are, women are not gold diggers. We're gold miners. We are 49er fans. And we're going to be whoever goes for us. And I'm also saying this because the Super Bowl is the number one weekend in my favorite place in the world, Las Vegas, California. And I'm not a part of it. And that makes me upset because there are more eyeballs on this stupid game that I have no interest in, that I'm not making money off of. That pisses me off. And I want to get in the game. So I'm just going to become my own cheerleader. I did go to cheerleader tryouts for the 49ers because my friend really wanted to be a cheerleader for the 49ers do you know they pay cheerleaders like eight dollars an hour it's ridiculous and uh okay you you don't even have to pay me (laughs) I just want the attention I am that crazy cheerleader and it's almost like a tribe too I don't know this this uh, whole football thing I'm not into but I'm into I understand gold mining 
And if that's going to help the 49ers win the Super Bowl week, you need a crazy bitch to be cheering you on because I got you. Anyways, I'm going to spend the night reading this. It won't take me long. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. And hopefully I will finish my life insurance thing tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good night and I will talk to you later. Bye.